Lake. Welcome to our online service on October the 11th. We're really glad that despite the wet weather outside, um, you can join us for worship today. And that's where we're going to start.
for somebody to pray for you if you would like. Everybody is welcome, of course our church family, but anybody you might know who could benefit. We speak both French and English and the idea is that this would be a place in the center of Neon filled with Jesus' love, his light, his hope and his presence. So if you need prayer or if you know somebody or if you would just like to get out of the house and come and connect with some people on Friday morning, come and join us at the Prayer Cafe. We'd love to see you here. study. Uh, we meet every Saturday morning from 7.30 to 9.30. Normally we meet together, but because of COVID, uh, we've been doing all of our meetings by Zoom. Our, uh, we, we meet together mostly around a discussion around the Bible, but we, we take a lot of time to, to, to talk and to get to know each other and to pray together. And uh, so in that way, we, get to, we do get to know each other better. Right? Uh, we've been going through the Gospel of Luke for uh, a number of months. Uh, if there's any men in the men's Bible study, they're going to be chuckling because it's been going on for quite a while. But we're taking a break and we're doing the, uh, the discussion on soul keeping. Uh, but, I, you know, people ask us, why is it only men? Uh, a number of years ago, we learned that men past the age of a certain, or past a certain age, have a very difficult time uh, making friends. And so, uh, getting together just as men gives, us an gives friendship among men a chance. And, uh, and that's what we are. We, we are trying to, to help get to know each other and to become friends, to support each other as we as we uh, as we walk our faith. And you don't, you know, we work with men of all ages. Uh, you don't have to be a believer to come, but you will find out what believing in Jesus is all about and what uh, and what the other men in the group uh, believe about Jesus. So if you want to start your weekend with some madness, join us for men's Bible study. Uh, you can email me or telephone me, and I'll send you the link. Uh, our Zoom and I'll send you our weekly announcement. Uh, hope to see you there. James has prepared a sermon for us to engage in together for this evening and uh, just prepare your hearts and minds as we look at that now. Well, I, I want to welcome you to our very first home church. I hope you're getting to know people and uh, really praying that this will be a meaningful way of us doing church together. Right at the moment, we're in the middle of a sermon series we are calling Soul Shaping. And uh, we're looking 
uh, what needs to happen in our life uh, in order to allow God to help us grow towards uh, spiritual maturity. So you might remember we, we thought about desire, the fact that uh, Paul said, I want to know Christ, becoming like him. Uh, and then last week we thought about the role of decision, that uh, in order for uh, us to grow that desire needs to be linked to decisions, the uh, decision to stop living like we did before we were a Christian, to put on our new nature uh, and then allow the Holy Spirit to live that life of putting off things we know are wrong and, and putting on Christ and learning to live uh, according to his example and by his truth. Well, today uh, we're going to think about dependence. Uh, uh, we're going to think about the fact that uh, to grow we need to be dependent. A few years ago, Hillary Clinton, inspired by an African proverb, wrote a book called It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. And what she was saying was that that in order to have healthy children, uh, a community needs to be involved. And inspired by that, a pastor called Todd Balsinger, a very good book called It Takes a Church to Raise a Christian. And what he was saying was that in order to grow as a Christian, in order to move towards Christian maturity, uh, we need to be part of a community, we need to be part of a church. Uh, and in that book he quotes James Packer who says, We should not think of our fellowship with other believers as a spiritual luxury, an optional extra to our private devotions. We should rather recognise that such fellowship is a spiritual necessity. For God has made us in such a way that our fellowship with him is fed by our fellowship with fellow Christians. And that fellowship needs to be deepened for our enrichment. And James Packer talks about that because of passages like the one that I'm going to read to you now. And so we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 4, earlier in the chapter that we looked at last week, and beginning to read at verse 11. For Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of all the fullness of Christ. And then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Uh, and we thought last week about the fact that this teaches us that, that the leadership of the church, the ministry of the church is all there for one great purpose, uh, to produce mature Christians. We, we the church, uh, our business is a life transformation business and our product is maturing Christians. Uh, we, we're not there to attract a big crowd. Uh, it's great if more people come to faith. What we are there is and exist to be is a community that cultivates Christ's likeness. And of course, uh, Paul here is talking all about that. He talks about maturity twice. And, and actually, literally, he says that we are, uh, he says, let's grow up uh, into Christ. It's a command with the grow up. So how does that happen? Well, I remember when I, I was doing one of my very first preaching courses, the lecturer said that before we write any sermon, we had to write a thesis statement. And uh, the thesis statement is just a sentence that sums up uh, what we believe the passage of Scripture is teaching. Uh, so this is my thesis statement for this passage of Scripture. 
you need a community to grow in maturity. You need a community to grow in maturity. That's what Paul is saying here in Ephesians. He's saying that in order to grow up into Christ, in order for us to become mature, as he describes it, uh, we need to be part of a church. We need each other. Community is indispensable to maturity when it comes to Christian spirituality. And the very essence of, of what we're going to look at tonight is from verse 15 into 16 where he says, Instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. For him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Now, what Paul is reminding us there is that we have fellowship in two levels. He, he imagines the church as a body of Christ. It's his favourite illustration. And he says that, that we've got fellowship vertically with Christ. He's the head, so we're, we're connected to Christ. But also, he says, at the same time, it's from Christ, the head of the body, that the rest of the church is connected, the ligaments uh, and everything is held together in Christ. So what he's saying there is that uh, you can't be connected to Christ without being connected to other believers, other Christians. So the, the vertical part of fe fellowship is intrinsically connected to the horizontal. You can't have one without the other. That's what Packer was talking about earlier when he said that Christian fellowship is absolutely essential. It's a necessity. Now, uh, how does this work? Well, Right in the middle of those two verses, uh, Paul talks about the church growing and building itself up in love. That, that's how maturity happens. And he says that that occurs when we live uh, our lives, when we live interconnected lives and inter interdependent lives. So the first thing is, in order to experience this community that leads to Christian maturity, we need to live interconnected lives. Paul talks about being joined and held together by every supporting ligament. And, and right the way through all of his letter, Paul speaks about us being members of the body. And just like your heart and your lungs are all interconnected, they're all connected to one another. In the same way, in the body of Christ, we're connected to one another. Uh, we don't live parallel Christian lives. We're, we're not a group of individual Christians that, that simply meet in the same place at the same time. Uh, we are connected through Christ. We, we live interconnected lives. And that means uh, in order to grow beyond maturity, uh, you need to be connected to other believers. And, and that's got to mean more than turning up for a service on a Sunday. And that's why we're doing what we're doing at the moment uh, with home church, because we recognise that what Paul is talking about here, about interconnected lives, about real deep fellowship, that can't happen at the moment very well when we, we sit apart and we have masks and we can't talk. But the second part of that is that we've got to live interdependent lives. Paul says that the only way that we grow to maturity is that we are interconnected, so we are sharing our lives, but also that we are living interdependent lives. In other words, we depend on each other because he says that growth towards maturity only happens as each part does its work. In other words, I need you to do what only you can do in the community for me to grow and you need me to do what only I can do in the community for us to grow. So we need each other. We really do need each other. We live interdependent lives. And so what he's saying there is that every single one of us has a role and responsibility in the church that helps other people grow in maturity. We need each other. Okay. Uh, what have we learned today? We've been thinking about the fact that 
uh, churches there uh, to be in the life transformation business to help us grow towards maturity. But we realise that that can only happen wherever we live interconnected and interdependent lives in a community. When we minister to one another and we receive ministry from one another, all those one another's when we care for one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, build one another up, hold each other accountable. All of that ministry has to happen between us in our interconnected lives and so that we can grow. And so what we are saying, the essence of what we are saying today is that we need to depend on each other. We can't grow individually as Christians towards maturity without depending on other believers. We really do need each other. So now we've got some questions to help you unpack and discuss and think through some of that. Thank you for joining us for worship today. It's been great to have you. Uh, next week, we will be meeting as a congregation in the building and you are welcome to join us. If you don't want to do that, there will also be an online service that you can watch on YouTube. Have a good evening. Good night.